Hallelujah. Let us all stand as we begin tonight's Wednesday night prayer and Bible study. I just want to welcome each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Let us all sing this song. standing on holy ground. Oh, 
be not dismayed whatever befalls us. I have found that in whatever trials we are facing, we will cope gloriously in the most trying of circumstances if we choose earnestly to exercise our God-given faith of the Son of God and consciously decide to strive firstly to keep our mind immersed in the Word of God and secondly to pray and put on the garment of praise in all circumstances. Worry and dismay or even grief is an easy and ready option for the natural self. Yet victory in all things comes from our choices as a convicted believer to pursue an unwavering alliance with our regenerated spiritual being that is already in union with Jesus and seated with him in heaven. That alliance becomes increasingly enjoyable and compelling as we study the Holy Scriptures diligently to show ourselves approved. Now to man and unto him who is also the author and finisher of the very faith by which we walk victoriously. We need to be praying fervently and unceasingly in and out of fellowship meetings that we may persevere and choose every day not only to immerse ourselves in the living word but pray and praise until we can truthfully testify that God does in fact inhabit the praises of his people. It would also be much easier and effectual in difficult times as we purposefully seek out the fellowship of God's people in spite of all other readily available options. This evening I want to encourage you the saints tonight, do not be dismayed and do not be discouraged whatever that may come your way, whatever may be for you as a believer. Just know that there's the power of prayer and there's the power of praise in God and heaven the praises of his people and we have at right at our fingertips you know the ability to walk and to live victoriously so church tonight continue to pray fervently and don't give up keep your eyes on the prize the race is not for the swift it is not for the strong educated the most powerful no it is for the one who endures until the end so saints of God tonight hold on to Jesus just know that he is holding on to you and count your blessings and praise him and give him the glory for all that he has done and all that he is doing in your life this evening I'd like to sing on this hymn and if you have your hymn now it's number 318 count your blessings and name them one by one and this, this hymn is about the Christian life it talks about being tossed being tossed like in the ocean, you know, with billows of waves, you know, and, and going back and forth. But guess what? When she says your anchor, your anchor will definitely move.
Good night, church. God bless you all and we like God to be shining. I don't want to give God thanks for his goodness and mercy and his joy. Continue to use me to do this point, to do his gospel to preach. I want to say something to the church and I do some heart and I pray for his great protection. It's time the people are going to feel the spirit of God. It's time for people to do what God calls to do. Yes, it's time for us to write favorite the school. Yeah. Because we are one of us, we are seeing many people, many souls are losing. And as I always said, if the righteous care is limited, when the sinners are born, you will appear. Yeah. You understand? It's time for us not to be filled with God's will. We're not coming in the house of God just to hear, but we have to be healed, we have to be to us. We have to go and preach the good word. We have to talk to you, give me your job, your home, your school, it is time. Yeah. You understand? Because what is spiritual, just be, I pray, man, I pray for two nights straight. It's what is spiritual, one is going to tell me. It's time for the church to wake up. Amen. It's time for God to start the filling with the spirit. Yeah. Not a lot of sin. When we enter this door, we come in here. Yeah. We come in and we say, we come to receive from you. That when we go out, we go out and fill with the spirit. Fill with his goodness and love for his people. And the most important thing in life in church, I would say, Peter not the other night. To bring to us is by loving for one another. By all to demonstrate our love. You understand? Yeah. Because this is what will bring people to the presence of God by yeah. loving one another. And it start with us. Yeah. Because judgment day begins with them or say judgment begins with us. Mm-hmm. The house of God first. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, what I want to say to you is time that power sign ministry be rise up and be powerful for you to stand. But we end, forget what everybody thinks about your thing. Yeah. It's time for you yeah. to fill with the spirit of God. Amen. And I tell of a pastor and his family for, for having us now and giving us courage and everything. And I praise and thank you that God will continue to use it as a to preach the gospel. But as I said, the power sign ministry is not a place just to come and sit down. It's a time for you to go up and do God's work. Because yeah, it's not about the pastor, it's all about us. But we receive from you. And if we cannot put God's will in our heart, how can we go? How can we reach people? Understand? How can we make the sinners to repent us? Because of the power and the love of God Jesus Christ. Because He died for us and we must take His truth and He will lead us into His spirit and into His glory. Because the Bible said, if any man suffer as a Christian, yeah. let him not be ashamed, but glorify God on his behalf. So let us be bold and let us be strong and let us be mind. Let us go out. And that power sign the street and place in the sanctuary and in this committee be a light to shine for another God. And we will see many by coming through their doors to be better because of your love. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we talk to everyone, your neighbors, your neighbors. Do not fold yourself but put yourself in the spirit of God. Yes. And God is going to guide you and protect you and take you through in every situation. Amen. And I thank you tonight for as I stand here. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And His Holy Spirit guide and protect you and always be with you. May the Spirit of the Lord be with you all. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Everything testifies 
of Jesus Christ. And church tonight, as Brother Francis said, we need to wake up and realize that Jesus is coming again and he is coming soon. Hallelujah. So be ready. I'm going to ask Abigail to share a word of testimony with us tonight. Good night, everyone. I want to thank God so much for life. I thank God for His goodness and His grace in my life, and I thank God for saving me. Um, I want to thank God for how prayers work um, in my job. Every month we have to make a quota, and we get a little incentive with that when we make our quota. And um, today and tomorrow will be my last day um, for the month uh, going on vacation for the appreciation. And I didn't make my quota as yet. And I had about $70,000 to make still. And I was like, I prayed about this because I was like, God, you know, the extra money will come in handy. And I sit down and work, and I'm getting no customers, like nobody in calling me. I just sit down, I walk in up and down, I check in Anita all the time, and get no sale. I see Anita making bill, and I just say, I said, Lord, if it's your will, it will be, it will happen. And um, I got a call, customer central, I purchase order. I was like, wait, just a little bit again, and next customer call, and the next customer call, and I just, I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, because two days, and I have to make this amount, and I thank God that he worked it out, and he worked it out fast. You know, um, sometimes we pray for things, and we want it one, one time, we don't get it, but um, I thank God that he answered my prayer instantly, and I thank God that I can trust him through everything. Um, because you know, the times that we're living in is, is serious times, and I thank God that I know that I can, I can go and I can call upon him, and he's right there to answer me. I don't have to make an appointment to talk to God, I don't have to pray to Mary or offer anything. I could just go to God, and that's how personal he is with us. And I just really, really want to thank God for that. And, um, I hope as we continue to pray tonight that we know that God is working on our behalf. Amen.
spare the saints weathering, amen, the, the rain that we have had, the storm that we have had, so that you can be in the house of the Lord. God bless you. And uh, some were not able to come over tonight. Like Brother Charles, he said they sent a message. Almost he's been in church tonight. He said he got out there and uh, all ready to come. And uh, he was soaked by the rain. And so he had to he had to go back home. All right, Brother Charles, you're going to get that umbrella, boy. <laughs> Amen. You want to welcome on the line, Sister Lisa Emre. Blessings on you, Sister. And our sister Sarah, Abundesa, and the family. We're glad that you catch us this evening on the live. And uh, make sure you guys don't miss us uh, Sunday morning and, and Sunday evening. It's uh, appreciation this Sunday evening. Also, Thanksgiving, grand Thanksgiving service, brethren. Praise God. It's promised to be a fantastic one. Amen. It's going to be great fellowship, uh, uh, great food as well, too. Amen. We are looking forward to the Thanksgiving this Sunday evening at 6 30. We're turning in the Bibles for the message tonight. Are you ready for God's Word? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please send in now your prayer request and we will be praying for you. I've just send it in in faith. I remember, all things are possible to him that believe. If you can believe tonight, glory to God that God will hear your prayer. That God will answer you, send it in tonight and see what the Lord can do. So, we are in St. Matthew's Gospel in chapter 26, as you can recall, verses 36 through verses 46, uh, as we all read together the word of the Lord. Are we there? Are you read with me now? Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto him his disciples, City here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death, but tarry ye and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this come pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh down to his disciples and finded them asleep. And said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thou will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went again. And prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand, that doth betray me. We have been looking at the subject, man's defining moment. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this awesome, awesome service, dear Father, this prayer meeting. And for the saints who have come together in the house of the Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, that you are mighty in the house tonight. You are powerful in the house tonight. Glory to God. You are powerful, dear Father, through the life tonight. Uh, touching the lives of people. Transforming lives. Uh, bringing encouragement. Uh, refreshment as well. Strength. Power. Anointing and victory. And so much more, dear Father. Bless Lord again, we pray the message that we are about to hear this evening in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. You may have your seats. Praise God. We have been looking at sec the second point and that is about surrender. We move on to the third point as the Lord will allow us. I know that we have been kind of packed here. Amen. At the second point for a few months now and I can't tell you. Amen. Uh, how much longer are we going to be back? But as long as God says, amen, to stay there, that's what we are doing. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. It says tonight that God is well alive. His word is well alive. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm so rich and so full. I tell you, we just can't get enough. Amen. There is so much. You can't exhaust the word of God, my friend. 
you know, the more that you dig in, the more that the Lord, you just find so much more, the Lord reveals so much more. And that's what's been happening to me, amen, is the more I look at the passage of scripture, the more I look at the points, is the more I'm seeing it all the time, and it just keeps on going, and I says, praise the name of the Lord, amen. So here, here, and I again, remember, we are learning so much things as Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. He prayed. Hallelujah. And then he surrendered himself to the will of the Father. Praise God. Surrender is important, my friend. Now, there was a church where the preacher and the song leader, they were not really getting along. There was friction. And the members could have sensed that as well because... These are key leaders, the pastor and the song leader weren't getting along too good. So it went so bad, it began to spill over now into the services. All right, so uh, the congregation was, you know, getting uh, uh, this uh, as, as well. So one week, uh, the preacher preached a fantastic message. He preached a message on commitment. He preached a message on surrender. He said, church, um, we should dedicate our lives to the Lord and to His service. Um, we should surrender ourselves to the service of the Lord, whatever God is calling us to do. But because the song leader and him, um, you know what, what, we're having this understanding, the song leader decided, I'm going to get at the preacher. You're preaching on commitment, you're preaching on surrender, and uh, he then led the congregation to sing this song, I shall not be moved. Wow. That's the worst thing you can do, my friend. Well, the next Sunday, things weren't getting better at all. And the preacher preached a fantastic message on giving. And how we should gladly give to the work of the Lord. Then the song leader, despite the preacher, now he led in a song, I love, I know rather that Jesus paid it all. So he's preaching about giving to the work of the Lord and the song leader is saying, don't worry, Jesus paid it all. Well, the next Sunday, the preacher uh, preached on a different subject. He preached on gossiping and how we should watch our tongues. And then the song leader, in spite, led the congregation right after, I love to tell the story. The preacher became very disgusted over the situation. And the next Sunday, he had it. He said to the congregation, that I am seriously considering resigning from the church. Well, the song leader then let the whole congregation, oh, in the next song, oh, why not tonight? Well, the next Sunday morning, the preacher uh, resigned and he informed the church. He said, church, Jesus led me here and Jesus was taking me away. The song leader then led in the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> Oh, my friend, I, I, I tell you, I hope that never, never happens uh, to us. Uh, but my friend, uh, surrender is the issue. Whenever you find uh, that there is this behavior, this attitude, this friction, this pulling, this talking, one wants to always have its way. It always boils down again to surrender. Yes, because it's our will against everything else. I want my will. If I don't get my way, well then it is the high way. You know there's a saying that goes on in the home, if mama ain't happy, nobody ain't happy. My friend, you know there are some people that are so strong willed, they are not willing even to bend a little bit, my friend. Why can't we bend a little bit? Why can't I give in a little bit? Why it must be, I gotta have my way, I gotta have the last word. And so, if, if, if my idea ain't carried, if, if I am not supported, my idea ain't supported, well look, uh, I am just out of here, alright? I am going to do my own thing, I'm going to do my own pala. If I don't get my way, I go to my own pala, I go to my own supermarket. It's, it's so true to speak, my friend. It's a matter, really, of surrendering yourself, your will to the Lord. And this is what we see Jesus doing in the garden. He came to this place and he said, it is my will, but your will be done. Surrender is challenging for preacher 
and also people. So I am aware of it, my friend. But listen to what Matthew chapter 16, 24, 26 has to say. Jesus said to his disciples, If anybody will follow me, if anybody will be my disciple, you must deny yourself, take up the cross, and you must follow me. For whosoever wants to save his life will lose it. And whosoever loses his life will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world and then forfeits his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Many people struggle today to find themselves. They think uh, that uh, they are full of life. That's what they portray. That's what they put out there. They are full uh, of life uh, and vitality. Yet uh, they keep on searching for the meaning of life. So don't take things, my friend, at face value. That people are so happy because they are engaged in all these things that are outside them. You will find that there is emptiness of life. And I know what I am talking about. In fact, there is a classic example of what I am saying in the Bible. Solomon was such a man. Solomon painted the picture that he indeed was the greatest in the world. He possessed more wealth than anybody else. He had more houses than anybody else. I mean, his rule spread way beyond the coasts of Israel. It spread far and wide. Many were in subjection to him. Many kings brought tribute to him. And he kept on piling on the dough. Kept on piling on the dough. We are talking, brothers and sisters, about trillions and trillions of, of dollars that came into Solomon. We, you cannot even count them. Because the Bible says in his day, when he threw a party, my friend, listen, no two vessels, and they were made of gold, cups, and so forth, were of the same fashion. And there, there was, it was so much. Yet Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes. And he said, listen, though I have wine, though I have women, I have a harem of women, and though I have wealth uh, beyond measure, he said, yet uh, it is emptiness, uh, it is chasing the wind. He said, vanity of vanities, said the preacher. So don't you ever believe, my friend, that people out there might paint a picture that they are so happy, yes, um, because they have this and they have that, um, yet inside there is a soul that is empty. Yet there is a soul, my friend, that is searching for true joy and true happiness, my friend. And the answer is right here and I, glory to God. And many of you have it, my friend. If you're looking for joy, if you're looking for real joy, there is a song that says, Let Jesus come into your heart, praise God. Your sins, he will wash away your, your night. He will turn it into day, glory to God. The answer, my friend, uh, amen, uh, for your searching for true happiness and true peace uh, is found in Christ uh, and only in Christ. Give him praise tonight, sir. Glory to God. There are people there that are trying many things. Uh, they are trying their careers. You're not going to find it, my friend. I tell you, you're not going to, you are going to come up miserable and empty at the end. If you think that your career is going to fulfill the desire of your true soul, you're going to be wrong, my friend. Some find it in toys. Not only children want toys. And Christmas is coming, the kids are looking for the toys. But there are children toys and there are big people toys as well too. And there are a lot of people, my friend, big people, who are, they think they could find happiness in their toys. So I'm talking about, my friend, their boats and their yachts. You know what I'm, their airplanes, their toys. Their, 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 you have, you know, different toys that people have, their skis, different things, and their cars, and so on. Yes, thinking they're going to find real joy. And yet, my friend, they come out empty. There are some that try vacations. Uh, there are some that try physical fitness uh, in order to find true satisfaction. Now, I'm not saying that these things are not good. 
But if you are pursuing these things um, to satisfy your inner soul, you will always come up empty. Some even go further than physical fitness. Um. Some try like for suction, and these things are very popular today, my friend. Um. Some uh, are not satisfied even with the light poor, my friend. Um, uh, you see, because the problem is not so much on the outside, the problem is really on the inside, my friend. Um, some go even to body and plants uh, as well. You talk, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, all kind of implants, uh, my friend, from the front to the side to the back, you name it. Uh, all kind of implants uh, that they are trying because why? They want uh, to have a good feeling, my friend. Uh, they want to feel good about themselves. Uh, and you will find out uh, that there is an emptiness. Have you seen some people? I tell you, start with one size. I don't want to, to come out right now tonight uh, and describe body parts, my friend. Uh, I give you some biology and some of you are telling you what's speaking or scolding in your seat. Uh, last Sunday, I give you some biology. Amen. <laughs> message uh, because we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. God made our body parts, uh, my friend. Uh, but some of you are satisfied with the body parts that God give you, my friend. Uh, so you're looking for extra bomb and things like that. Uh, you understand? Sing it. Come on. Come on. You're, you're happy with that, my friend. Um, you understand? You want accessories. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It, 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 it never enough. It never enough, my friend. It is never. It is never big enough. I want to say. It, it is never big enough, my friend. And it is crazy. These people are crazy, 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 my friend. You understand? And they are drawing attention. Whatever they could draw attention to themselves, so they could make. They, so they feel. They do it, and it's absolutely crazy, my friend. I mean, your lip so already beautiful, but you want to go and make your lip ten times bigger, my friend. I can't understand this thing, man. You know, I, 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 and it is so uncomfortable, so uncomfortable. People trying to lose weight, but you put in on weight. I mean, hello, somebody. Why people do themselves these things? It is crazy and go through surgeries after surgery and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, my friend. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, Sister Joyce said. And Brother Prim and I were talking today. And we were talking about my head. For some reason, my head came into play and whatnot. But Pastor, why you don't go and get a um, hair implant? I said two reasons I have here. One, I'm afraid, nigga. <laughs> and the other, the body, it will cost. Uh, I can't justify that, my friend. Uh, you know, it's hard to justify that situation. I say, I reach a stage in my life, glory to God. Well, the wife like me so, that is the main thing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm not throwing myself out there, brothers and sisters. I'm not fishing. Hello, somebody. Glory to Come on, somebody. Are you looking? Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the madam like me, yes, so that is the main thing. Praise the name Amen, somebody. She can put up over that. Glory to God. Me and attract nobody else. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Yes, they praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. I ain't going to put myself out there. I ain't looking for nothing. Glory to God. Amen, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. But why people do these things? Why people do these things, my friend? The body and plants and all, all of these things. Because they're trying to find uh, that joy. They're trying to find that satisfaction, my friend. You're not going to find it until you surrender yourself to Jesus and you're going to find happiness. Amen. And then you realize I did need uh, the, the lip uh, augmentation. I did need, you know, the other implants, my friend. Glory to God. You just say, Lord, I am happy. Amen. The way that you have made me praise God. I don't have to change the color of my eyes. Come on, somebody. Are you with me tonight? Hallelujah. I don't have to make my eyelashes longer. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm happy with the way that God made me. Could I hear amen, somebody? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pray. I don't have to punish myself this way, my friend. When you have Jesus, glory to God. I tell you, there is a happiness, a peace. 
Easter, this world can't give it praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you give the Lord praise tonight? Amen. Praise God. So brother, they are trying the New Age movement, which is so, so popular. And I tell you right now, it's on, on fire in the new, new Age movement, my friend. But I don't see it in the Bible. You've got to be real careful in this New Age movement and philosophy that we are having today, my friend. You know, it, it, it is from the devil. I tell you, it is from the devil, my friend. It is the same as a new thing. The Bible is outdated. The Bible is, 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 is too old. It's an old book and that's not relevant to us today. But I will tell you, when heaven and earth pass away, you see this book, it says, irrelevant, my, my friend, it will be dead. Long after the New Age movement perish, my friend, the Bible is going to be dead. Are you listening to me, somebody? Glory to God. Long after the cities of this world are gone, the Bible is going to be there. Praise the name of Jesus. So you can say what you want about the Bible. The Bible is too old fashioned. It has no relevance to us. It's a new age movement and what not. We are gods of our own. Yes, we have our own. We make our own destiny. And this is the new age philosophy that is taking place. We don't have to surrender to no higher being. We are gods of our own. This is is brother about the new age movement today you don't need Jesus you don't need to worship another being you are God yourself watch out my friend this is from the devil because Satan said I will be like God so the new age movement my friend started long before long before it started in the heart of Lucifer my friend I want you to understand that and he is telling everybody you are a God uh, of your own uh, and you yourself deserve worship. Uh, yes, my friend, uh, it is very deceptive. Uh, you got to watch out for that. Uh, it will not bring you peace uh, and happiness, my friend. Uh, some try the Eastern religions today and I tell you it is here in our country, my friend. Uh, Oh, people are going crazy. And why? After all these things, uh, be careful. There's real deception. Drugs. Uh, people are trying to find it in drugs. Uh, they're trying to find it in alcohol. Uh, they're trying to find it in pornography. Anything, everything, my friend, uh, that will bring them some kind of satisfaction. But I said to you, all what I've shared and much more, my friend, uh, will not give you an eternal peace and eternal satisfaction. It is only temporary. It's like a man who only needs a fix. You know when somebody's on drug? When somebody's on drug, let me tell you something. All they're looking for is a fix. They can't hold on a drug for long. They won't hold on a drug for long. All they want is money to buy drugs. When they get that drug, when they, when, 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 that money for that drug, you ain't seen them again at all, my friend. Because they are hooked on it. See, this is what happens when it's short labor. It is short labor. Before you do it, that feeling is gone, that sensation is gone, and the reality sets in again. And they're looking for another fixer. Some tried in sex, in extra uh, marital affairs. I could go on to that, my friend. Yes, sir. Trying to find this, this peace and this happiness. They cannot be faithful to one person that God had given them to. Because why? The problem, brothers and sisters, is in their hearts. They are resisting God. And you must come to this. When you come to this place of surrender, you are truly going to find peace. Give him praise tonight, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like what Jesus said. They look alive on the outside. But inside, they are dead, my friend. They are painted nice. You could paint uh, you, the stones on the cemetery. How nice you want. Fresh paint. The reality of it, inside there, is dead men bones, my friend. That's what Jesus is saying. Yes, you can put up what kind uh, of a facade that you want. Uh, but Jesus said inside there is death because of sin. And the only one can make you alive is Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that we are quick, my friend. Amen. We are made alive only in Jesus Christ. And if you really want to experience life, a full life, my friend, you find it in Christ. You don't find it in toys. You don't find it in boys. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't find it in girls. You don't find it in drugs, my friend. 
and door, you find it in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. You ask any person that is born again in this church here tonight, and they will tell you that they only found joy and peace and happiness the day that they surrendered to Christ. Amen. That day, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, they found themselves. Amen. There are so many people trying to find themselves up to the day. They don't know what they are about. Even some people in the church, uh, they're still trying to find themselves. Uh, they're unsettled. Uh, they're not settled, my friend, uh, because they're trying to find themselves. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When are you going to find yourself and come to this place of surrender? Stop fighting against God. God told Saul, said, stop uh, kicking against the bricks, man, because you're not going to win this battle. You're not going to win this battle. Come to this place and surrender. That's why when the light struck him on the road to the masters in Acts chapter 9, the first words that came out of Saul's mouth he said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Those words express my friend this keyword on surrender. He came to this place, he said, I stop fighting against God, I can't win this battle. Lord, I surrender myself to you. What do you have me to do? God says, no, I can use you. Praise God. I will show you God said I will show you how many things, Lord, that you would be willing to suffer for my sake. You killed Christian, you hated me, but now your hate will turn to so much love that you would be willing to suffer the worst. And he did, he did, Jesus told him that. He did praise the name of the Lord. He found no true peace, glory to God. It's only when you lose your life and surrender to Christ, you will find your purpose in life and you will find your calling in life. But the surrender principle isn't just for new Christians, it is for mature Christians as well. You see, the reason why I say that is that the enemy knows this and that is why he works over time, my brethren. To provide um, with uh, new opportunities uh, to get you sidetracked or distracted. you got to watch out for that, my friend. The enemy is always, if you cannot get your gun right away, if you cannot come with a frontal attack and just annihilate you, my friend, and he knows that it's impossible to do it as a believer in Jesus Christ. He knows he can't do that because he got to come through Christ. So what he does, he changes the tactics and the strategy now, and he comes out with distraction, my friend. You got to be careful about it because it's always going to bring distraction. What distractions are you facing right now for walking in faith and victory, my friend? And complete surrender to the Lord. What is it that the devil is dangling before your eyes? What bait is he putting to you right now? What bait did he put to you this past week or even this morning, my friend? What has been dangling before you to just to distract you, my friend? You see, the devil knows your weaknesses, yes, sir, and he will exploit it to the fullest. He will take advantage. No wonder why the Bible tells us in Ephesians 4 it says, Give no place to the devil. Give no place. As long as you make an, an opening or leave an opening, my friend, the devil will take full advantage. He's not asking for much, my friend. He's not asking for no major disobedience because he knows you. You are not going to just bam. Just drop the ball as a believer in Christ. But you know what? He's going to bake you little by little by little, my friend. That's what the devil is going to do. He's going to exploit your weaknesses. He look at you. He look at your weak areas. He knows what you are having trouble with, my friend. And he is going to continue to bake you in that particular area, my friend. He knows where your weakness are. Whether it's in studying the Bible, whether it's in, whether it's in prayer, whether it is in witnessing, whether it's the area of finances, whatever your weaknesses are today, my friend, he is going to exploit it to the fullest. So you've got to be alert, my friend. The devil always sets you up. Remember this, my friend, to bring your job. Somebody, a wise man, say, if the devil can't get your job, if he can't get your job, he gonna push you up. Watch out for pride. I spoke about that. And another message, my friend. 
if he cannot get you down, he will push you up and make you feel you are it, my friend. Nothing can happen if you if you're not are wrong. And you tell me we've seen a job here that I do it. If I not here today, nothing can go on. Hey, watch yourself, boy. You already been set up by the devil. Watch yourself. I'm telling you, watch yourself. If you feel the world can't go wrong if you're not here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're already being set up. You're already being set up, my friend. I can tell you, me, even me, I have to be careful of myself. Last day, I said, well, if I hear nothing can go on, that is not true. It will go on. This is the work of the Lord, my friend. It will go on. And if I make a kind of good leader, it will go on, my friend. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of... I am just privileged enough to serve the Lord. Yeah, my friend. But I should never come to this place if I don't care. The church can go on. Who church is it? It is the Lord's church, my friend. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise God. But the devil is going to set you up. Um, He's going to go out in the field so about yourself. Um, if I'm not there, things can't go on. They can't do nothing without me and what not. I demand, I the woman and what not. You understand? The country can't run without me. I demand a business. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hey, long before you're coming down, my friend. Because he will set you up to bring you down. You don't have time running like that tonight, boy. I ain't no ready to preach. <laughs> Amen. Serious, I'm no ready to preach. Glory to God. Time running away like I tell you. Wow. Incredible, my friend. But you have to be careful, my friend. Come to this place of surrender. And say, Lord, I surrender my will. The will is the problem. You see, that stubbornness, that will of ours, uh, contrary to God's will. I've got to surrender the will. Amen. That's what Christ struggled with right there. The God. Would you understand that? That's what I'm talking about it. My friend, that was a struggle to surrender. He said, if it be possible, if it be possible, take those a struggle. Take the cup, take the cup from me. This suffering, this pain there was. There was a struggle not to do it. The flesh didn't want to do it. Of course, why? I mean, who wants to go through pain? Jesus was in human form. He was saved. But then he came to this place, says, not my will, but your will be done. And that's the only time that salvation could have come to man, my friend. When Jesus surrendered himself. And the only time that God could use you, you've got to surrender yourself. Amen. And get on this altar. Praise God. And say, Lord, I humble myself. Amen. I should not think too much of too. The Bible said, Don't a man should not think more highly of himself than he ought to think, my friend. Anytime you start thinking, you're so big and you're this and you're that, and, and start to go for people and think people are wrong because you, you're just big, big. All right. All right. You're looking for a fall, my friend. You're looking for a fall. Yes. Humble yourself. And God says He's going to exalt you to the Father. Thank you, Lord, for this message. I know we got to pray. Then, Lord, that has run away so quickly tonight, dear Father. But I thank you, dear Lord, for the time. People here at Power and Science Ministries, dear Father. We are all learning to surrender more of our wills, dear Father. I don't think that any one of us could say that we have surrendered totally. We sing the song, I surrender all, but in truly, we still have so much areas that need to be surrendered. Yes, um, sometimes we will be with our mouths. Yes, <clears throat> sometimes we will be with our priorities. Sometimes we will be with our time. Sometimes we'll be with our pockets, dear God. Sometimes we've got to deal with our bitterness. we got to deal with our anger. we got to deal with our pride. There's so many areas, dear Lord, that we can think about, dear Lord Jesus, that, that need yet uh, to be surrendered, dear Father. We are growing. We have not arrived, Lord, completely at that place. But the more that we surrender, it is the more that God can use us. Use us. And we want to be filled with the Spirit. But God can fill us with the Spirit. If there is anger and jealousy inside of us and malice and, and if there are is fornication and if there is adultery, God can fill us at uh, uh, this. Because if that cup is already filled with something else, if that cup has already something else, and we say, Lord, fill me, fill me. How, how could God fill that cup and he got something in it? The only way that God could fill a cup, he got to be empty. God be empty. 
God want to fill it. And God ain't going to fill a cup that is dirty already. No, no, no. He ain't going to pour. He's not going to pour his spirit upon a dirty cup. He got to pour his spirit upon a clean cup. Clean vessel, the Bible says. Amen. Father, help us to see these things. I thank you, dear Lord, for making us a better church here at Power and Science Ministries, dear Father. Praise God as we learn to submit more and more of ourselves uh, to the will of God in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're blessed with the Lord and good on the Lord tonight, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And for those of you online, thank you for being online with us tonight. Praise the Lord. I pray for you as well too. Father, bless the folks are online. God, you to supply to every need. I pray for those who are not well, that's for healing. Your Lord, upon their bodies, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, folks online, just remember that Sunday morning is our regular worship service. It's at 9 a.m. Looking forward to see you and your family. I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. You come with a spirit of expectation. You come believing. You're going to go receiving. Watch what God's going to do in your life. Transform your life. Give a prayer line. We pray for you. And you believe God. God's going to heal you. Amen. Then Sunday evening, our second service is our grand Thanksgiving service. And Pastor's Appreciation will be celebrations of Big Lake Cross here at 6 30. Praise the Lord. And so please do come early to get a seat. All right. On this Sunday evening. Bless the Lord. So we bid you guys good night. And if you would like to, and uh, we encourage you to, in fact, join us in prayer as the rest of us here remain for an hour and pray. All right. So blessings on you. Glory to God. Let's all break up.